Welcome to CQG. I'm going to show you how to use our order ticket in QTrader and all the cool features you can use with it. We already have our order ticket pulled up right here, but to get our order ticket, we're just going to come to the trade button, hit our order ticket. You'll see another one pops up. The limit to trade on our order ticket is four tabs. Up here you can see we have four tabs. And if you want to trade more than one, you can add another order ticket, or you can click this red square right here and hit the replicate button, and it'll bring up another order ticket. You can trade as many as you want. Going into a little explanation of our order ticket, you can see in the left and right blue and red columns is our buy and sell columns, and the prices are 10 deep. You can see the trades in each column, and to the left you can see the accumulated volume, both numerically and in a histogram. And as you can see, we can move up and down our price ladder just like this using our scroll button on our mouse, and you should see the prices change on the buttons both left and right. If we want to add or remove a tab on our order ticket, we simply just click on it, right click, and we can close the tab just like that, and add another one by just clicking the plus button right here and typing our symbol where it says symbol. As is with everything in CQG, this order tick is totally customizable to your own specifications. And we can do that by going up here to the setup, going into our trading preferences. There's a lot of things we can change and customize with our order ticket. Starting out with our display, you can see we can change our different themes in our order ticket as well as columns. And there's also different trading display elements we can change and that's in this whole area right here as well as trading entry displays and that will be all right here and as always make sure you apply it and then OK when you're customizing the order ticket. Going on to other trading preferences we can change our notifications and what this area does is it we can assign different sounds for different executions for example when an order is filled if we check this button and we assign a sound we're gonna assign the up and it'll sound like that every time an order is filled as well as changing the trading interface background pop-ups and confirmations. We also have our risk section and this is where we can manage the amount of order sizes and positions for either a, st a certain symbol or for all accounts as well as change our different order sizes on the buttons in our, our ticket. There we can enter in here all the different order sizes we want as well as a default order size to come back to by right clicking in the box. We'll show you that a little later in the video. And finally the last trading preference we're going to go into with you is smart orders. And our smart orders are all are all our limits and strategies and depending on what you want on when you're trading we can just make sure they're enabled and this box is checked right here. We'll just go down the line and make, we'll just make sure all the smart orders are enabled. Keep in mind the last three smart orders in the trading preferences area here are all for Asian markets. And these are our trading preferences in QTrader. Now that we have our order ticket set up just the way we want it, let's start trading. As you can see right away, the difference between our order ticket and DOM trader is you can't click and drag things into the buy and sell column. What you can do is you can scroll up and down the ladder for the prices and you, as you can see the buttons change. Now to buy and sell you, you have to use our buttons on the left and right side. Left is and blue is our buy buttons and right and red is our sell buttons. So let's get started. I'm going to stick with the S&P mini contracts right here and this is the tab we already have pulled up. And then we have our different types of orders down here. I'm going to stick with the day. So I'm just going to start with the simple buy and sell limit. So to buy, we're going to pick our price. With, we're just going to scroll up to it and we're going to buy and you'll see the five lot sell limit right here and then we're gonna sell right here and that's just how you that's just how you set up a simple buy and sell limit on our order ticket and we're just gonna drag that to the market and you'll see it get filled so as we can see we're long five you see our sell limit right here we can get rid of that by simply just right clicking on the limit itself and it disappears so let's set up a stop limit we're currently long so let's put a stop loss on this trade and we can do that by going down here to our stop we get a stop we're gonna end up stop loss right here by clicking the stop and we click the price we want to have a stop loss at we're gonna go for this price right here and then we're gonna set it right there for our stop loss and once again we can right click our stop just to get rid of it and you'll see it disappears we also have our quantity buttons down here this is the amount of how big of the lot size we want and as stated before we can customize these to our own specifications. Right now we have a 5. We can reset that to our default which is 1 by right clicking it and you'll see all the buttons change as well as in the box. You can also type the lot size. We're gonna go with a 10 and we can reset this limit right here just by right clicking again. Since we're long still we're gonna set a DOM triggered stop. We go back down to the stop and we select DOM triggered stop 
and from here we can select the price in which we want to trigger the stop. We're going to select this price right here. Here we have to enter a value. We're going to enter a thousand. This means that the volume can be no greater than a thousand. It has to be less than or equal to for the DOM triggered stop to execute. From here we can just place the order and you'll see the DOM triggered stop right here, the stop sign with the D in it. All these stops mentioned here can also be used in the trailing stops. And that tab is found right next to it and these are all of our trailing stops. You know. And this is where you can find the DOM triggered trailing stop. Order ticket has OCO and bracket mode and that can be found right here in this tab. If you want to use either one, make sure it has the check mark right next to it. OCO is a multi-part order. If one part of the order is executed, then all parts are canceled. So to activate the OCO mode, we're just going to click on the link here. You'll see that both the buy and sell columns both change into OCO mode. So we're going to buy at this price right here, and you'll see our limit right here. And if we place a sell limit right here, you'll see that they're both connected and before the OCO is complete we're just gonna hit the link again and you'll see in the orders and positions tab below the two orders so if we bring one into the market they're both canceled another way we can set up an OCO order is if we buy if we buy orders and sell orders that are already on the order ticket we can change them into OCO by simply going into our orders and positions either on the bottom of the order ticket or the orders and positions itself and clicking on the link and clicking the other one on the bottom to connect the orders and then finally clicking the top link again and you'll see that the orders turn into the OCO order. And now you have an OCO order so if we bring one into the market the other one is canceled and you're now long. We can also go into our bracket mode and we can do that by simply clicking into the bracket mode and you'll see brackets are now on our buttons to signify that we are in bracket mode. To execute a bracket order, say let's buy right here in the market, we'll buy a limit, and we'll see here is our target order and our stop loss. We're going to set it for a five tick range. So we're going to place our bracket order, and you'll see it right there in the ladder. And this is where we're going to see our parked orders in this tab, and our parked orders tab right here. So we're going to bring it our order to market, and you'll see we'll now have working orders in a target five ticks below and a target five ticks above. And in the working tab, you can see that they are OCO orders. So if I drag the limit into the market, both of the orders will cancel. We can also add, we can also add studies onto our trading interface. And we can do that by adding the studies on to our chart. We're gonna add Bollinger Bands. And then right clicking on the Bollinger Bands to show Bollinger Bands on trading interface. And you'll see from here that we have Brown and green squares to indicate the high and low of the Bollinger Bands. We can set up trades on the Bollinger Bands by right clicking on the square indicated on the order ticket. And since we're in bracket mode, we're going to set a bracket sell limit on this Bollinger curve. And we're going to set a buy for the lower curve. Now as the study varies, the orders will vary with it. To remove the study from the order ticket, we can just right click on the square and select the remove all. Now that we have some buys, sells going on in our order ticket, we have our buttons here down below. These stand for if we hit the X buys all button, it'll cancel all the buys we have going in our order ticket for the just the mini S&Ps. And as well for the sells, we will cancel all of our sells currently being set in the order ticket. And all would be both buys and sells in the mini S&P and the global button cancels any orders in any market. Thank you for using CQG and this is how to use our order ticket in QG.